magnetism. So magnetism, sort of like uh, electric charge, uh, produces a, an invisible force and uh, these kinds of invisible forces are popular for special effects, especially in uh, science fiction. Now, with regards to magnets, a few basic observations. Uh, most metals uh, cannot be magnetized, so things like aluminum, copper, and such, um, you can't make a permanent magnet out of these metals. However, uh, iron and a few other metals and some uh, alloys uh, are said to be ferromagnetic, which means uh, they can be magnetized and remain magnetized. Now, magnets attract ferromagnetic metals, so not every piece of iron is magnetized, but a magnet will attract a piece of iron whether it's magnetized or not. Uh, two magnets can either attract or repel each other depending on the poles of the magnet, and uh, magnets have a north pole and a south pole, and if we have a south pole on one magnet and a north pole on another magnet, those two uh, will attract, so these opposites attract, much like electric charge. Uh, and if we have a south pole uh, next to another south pole, uh, those two repel. Similarly with a north pole repels another north pole. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, not every metal is ferromagnetic, so uh, here's a stack of coins, the ones on the left um, are not ferromagnetic and the ones on the right uh, are. Uh, most of the ones that are ferromagnetic there simply have some iron or steel. Now, uh, what happens with a piece of iron becoming magnetized is first, if it's unmagnetized, then there are uh, in the solid iron uh, magnetic domains which are pointing in all random directions, so there's no synchronization or alignment of these uh, magnetic uh, domains. Each magnetic domain is like a, a tiny uh, internal magnet. Well, if we bring a strong magnet close to that uh, piece of iron that was unmagnetized, some of the internal domains uh, start to become aligned with that uh, strong magnet nearby, and then uh, that uh, piece of iron becomes weakly magnetized. Now if we bring the strong magnet even closer and leave it there for a long time, then uh, more and more magnetic domains become aligned and eventually we have now a new piece of iron that has been magnetized. Uh, so we can see this in um, demonstration, so I have a strong uh, horseshoe magnet and I've put a nail on it, now that nail is magnetized and you can see that it magnetizes the nail below it and the one below that, uh, but now if I take it away it returns to being unmagnetized. So as I said the Magnetic domains and the iron nails are aligned by proximity to the strong magnet so that each nail becomes a magnet um, temporarily and when I uh, remove the top nail from the strong horseshoe magnet uh, the domains return to being uh, unaligned and the nails lose most of their magnetization. Now if I left those nails attached to the strong magnet, uh, say overnight, then uh, they would actually retain a permanent alignment and magnetization. Now it's also possible to scramble those uh, magnetic domains, and the easiest way to do that is by raising the temperature, which uh, produces a lot of um, random molecular motion, and that will demagnetize a piece of iron. So here you see a nail, which is hanging and it is attracted to the horseshoe magnet. Now I'm going to 
uh, heat up the uh, nail. So the nail is going to get red hot. And if I get it hot enough, see, once I get it hot enough, uh, I have scrambled those uh, magnetic domains inside the nail and it can't uh, retain alignment and so it's no longer attracted to the horseshoe magnet. A simpler way of creating a magnet is uh, to make an electromagnet. So when we have a current passing uh, through a wire, there's a magnetic field that's produced and we can augment that magnetic field by wrapping the wire into a coil and then uh, this uh, current when it passes uh, through this uh, coil of wire produces a fairly strong magnet. We can make it even stronger by uh, putting a piece of iron or steel uh, inside of the coil. Here's uh, an example of that. I have a, an electric coil. A coil, coil is just um, wire wrapped many times around in a circle. So now I'm turning on the electromagnet. Now I'm turning it off. So, so electromagnets are also um, popular for uh, special effects like um, it's a plot element in uh, this episode of Breaking Bad where they uh, install a large electromagnet in a truck in order to uh, destroy some uh, computers. Now we know that the Earth has a magnetic field. Um, we have a small magnet on a pivot that's a compass and the uh, magnet aligns with the uh, Earth's magnetic field being attracted uh, to it. And since uh, there is uh, iron inside of the Earth's core, you might think that it was a permanent magnet like the horseshoe magnet, but actually it's an electromagnet. Um, and there's uh, electric currents within the core of the Earth. Uh, we know it's not a permanent magnet because as we saw when iron gets hot it can't retain the alignment and it's um, uh, extremely hot in the core of the Earth. Now one uh, last example of electromagnets is an electric motor. So uh, we can have the force of an electromagnet serve to um, create a rotation uh, by passing a current through some electromagnets with the appropriate appropriate um, orientations. So I'm going to turn on this um, simple motor and I'll explain the operation here in a moment but let's just watch it. Notice that there's a switch at the top of the motor and as I'm increasing the current the motor is spinning faster and faster. So the way this um, simple motor works is uh, at one point the uh, central electromagnets are set up so that uh, the North Pole is next to the North Pole on one side and there's a South Pole next to the South Pole on the other side and so of course they repel each other and the central shaft uh, turns. Now when this um, orange uh, electromagnet which starts out on the left, when it spins and it's over on the right, the switch at the top reverses the direction of the current and that reverses the polarity of the electromagnet and now this becomes a south and so once again it is repelled and so we continue uh, the cycle back and forth as it uh, spins around. So in uh, summary, uh, most metals cannot be magnetized. Ferromagnetic metals such as iron can be magnetized by a magnetic field. Opposite poles, uh, north and south, of magnets attract. Like poles, north and north or south and south repel. Uh, 
magnetism may be removed by heating. Electric currents produce magnetic fields, uh, like we saw in the uh, electromagnet. Uh, the Earth's core acts as an electromagnet, and again we know that it's not a permanent magnet because it's so hot. And finally, uh, one example of an electromagnet is an electric motor, which uses electromagnets uh, to create a force, and that force uh, serves to uh, produce the torque that uh, turns the motor. So that's the um, basics of magnetism. And you see from this last part, there's a strong connection between uh, magnets and electric currents. And there's uh, more to say about that, and we'll do that in the next tutorial.